Johannes Kepler was not husband material. He was born weak and sickly, and so didn't fit the standard definition of the upright Protestant provider. In modern terms, he was likely on the autistic spectrum, and showed little interest in life outside his work with astronomy. His obsession with the planets meant that he would never rise to a high position, and his refusal to conform to others' religious beliefs meant that he was constantly under threat of exile. But when it came time for him to do his duty and secure a marriage, it must be said that, in Barbara Mueller, he had landed quite a catch. Her father certainly thought so, and considered the weedy, poverty-stricken oddball a poor match for his daughter. He was right. Still, she was already twice a widow, despite being just 24, which meant the financially insecure Kepler at least had something stable to draw on, provided he could convince her family to let go of it. From there, things mostly went downhill. In the early years of their marriage, the Keplers lost two children, and a third later. After their exile from their home in Graz and relocation to Prague, Barbara Kepler sank into despondency. She struggled to recreate the family and social network she had enjoyed at home, and retreated into prayer books. Unable to speak Latin, she was completely excised from her husband's social circle, at his design, as he considered such topics unbecoming for a woman. With convents closed and single women scorned, a Protestant woman's role was to raise a family, which Frau Kepler was increasingly failing to do. While two of her children would survive, she had absolutely no connection to her husband or his interests. She would often interrupt his study to harangue him over their financial situation, which Kepler would bear quietly. Too quietly for his wife, who would often marvel at his lack of passion. It irked her that, despite his many connections at court, and many influential friends, he could not secure a higher salary. Her small circle of acquaintances were titteringly referring to her as Mrs. Stargazer, a somewhat ironic title as Kepler was severely nearsighted and did hardly any stargazing. And yet, he was a faithful husband, taking Jacob, who toiled for fourteen years for his bride Rachel, as his example. He wrote compassionately of their shared anguish of their children's deaths. Quote, no day can soothe my wife's yearning, and the word is close to my heart. O oh, vanity of vanities, and all is vanity. A lifelong believer in astrology, Kepler had long felt his marriage would be less than happy, as his wedding had occurred under, as he put it, calamitous skies. As court mathematician, Kepler had to construct astrological profiles for his patrons. As part of his research, he would often use anonymous examples of people with similar profiles. One such profile, which Kepler wrote sometime around 1600, cut a little close to the bone. If you behold a person at whose birth the good planets Jupiter and Venus were not propitiously placed, you will see that such a person can be righteous and wise, and yet still lead a dismal and cheerless existence. Such a woman is known to me. She is praised across the city for her virtue, modesty, and humility. But yet she is single-minded and fat. From childhood on, she was sternly treated by her parents. Barely of age, she was married against her will to a man of forty, and to another of the same age, of a livelier disposition, after the first early death. But he was little of a man and passed the four years of his married life in illness. For her third husband, she, previously rich, married a poor man in a disdained position. Her fortune was withheld unjustly. She can have only one maidservant, who is deformed. In all transactions she is confused and perplexed. She also gives birth with difficulty. Everything else about her is similar. You can here recognize in soul, body, and fate the same character which is in fact analogous to the position of the stars. Yet it is impossible to say that this soul forged its fate, because that fate comes from outside and is foreign. The stars would not smile on Frau Barbara Kepler. In January 1611, her three surviving children were stricken with smallpox. Of the three, her six-year-old son Friedrich did not survive. 
By May of that year, troops nominally fighting for Kepler's patron, the Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II, sacked Prague, destroying monasteries and churches. With them came disease, which Barbara sought to alleviate by ministering to the sick. She then contracted an infection, and on June 23rd, died. She was 37.